Hey guys, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. Thanks for joining me. Well, I hear it all the time through the Survival Show podcast, social media, and YouTube. David, what gear and supplies do I need to make it safely through an extended power outage or disaster event at home? Well, you came to the right place today if that's your question. We are going to blitz through the first five of ten vital home disaster categories you need to think about to comfortably survive a multiple day power outage or disaster event at home. Then next time, we're gonna cover the other five categories in my list. Okay, in the next two videos, these are the 10 essential categories of gear and supplies we're gonna cover in this series. Power, water, first aid, heating, lighting, communications, home defense, food, hygiene, and maintenance. But today we're gonna be focusing on power, water, first aid, heating, and light. Stay tuned until the end to get my free 72 hour prepper home emergency disaster checklist. But before we get into this, I wanna thank our new sponsor, the Sportsman's Guide. Yes, guys, we do have sponsors now, which is a good thing. It's a win-win for everyone. You win because our sponsors help us fund videos like this one, so I can get you more great free video content on a more regular basis. You win again when you use the link in the description or above to check out the outdoor survival military surplus and home emergency gear that they have over there. You will be amazed at all the cool stuff that the Sportsman's Guide has. Plus, you save money with their famous lowest price guarantee and a lot more at Sportsman's Guide. For your convenience, I've placed a link in the video description and at the top of the screen so you can check out the Sportsman's Guide. Okay, let's get into this emergency checklist. First up is power. Cut the power and things go from bad to worse fast. Lights, heat, cooling, communications, computers, water pumps, refrigerators, freezers, and a lot more are useless, guys, without power and will disrupt your life. So one of the best things you can do to prepare for a grid down event is to have three tiers of reliable backup power. So here's a few alternative power options that we'll breeze through right now but I'll cover in depth in a future video. So to start, you want some AAA and AA batteries. I recommend a solar charging station with rechargeable batteries. To do that, you're gonna need a solar charging panel like this one and couple this with a battery brick and you've got a lot of power to keep your cell phones charged, which are the number one item that you wanna keep going in a disaster event because one of the first things that goes back on because emergency services needs it to are cell phones. A solar power generator, this is a small one from Goal Zero, and the power panel, but there's a lot larger ones that you can get also. A small portable or medium gas generator. There's whole house generators powered by natural gas or liquid propane. A power inverter, this is a small power inverter for a vehicle. There's larger ones that connect directly to the battery of your car or your truck. And a really big thing to consider, don't forget to stockpile emergency fuel treated with stabilizer. Get this guys, treated with stabilizer for long-term storage. All right guys, so up next is water. If your home water supply in any way depends on electricity or public utility services, you need an emergency water stockpile and the means to acquire, purify, and store additional water as needed. At a minimum, for a three-day power outage, you need one gallon of clean water per person per day. First, to store water, you can clean and fill milk jugs, BPA-free containers, or even glass bottles with water. I would also recommend getting some five-gallon water containers with a spout at your retail store. And make sure that you have a high-quality hand pump water filter that can crank out about one liter per minute. And even one step better than a hand pump water filter is a gravity fed filtration system that can service a lot of people. Water purification tablets, in most instances, one tablet can treat one quart of water and make sure that you boil all questionable water. And for a really quick reference and read on water purification, procurement, and water safety, the Tiny Survival Guide is a great thing to pick up, which are available right now. Next up is first aid. So regardless of the situation, if you or anyone else in your group is injured, you need to be able to fix yourself and them until you can receive proper medical care. A good first aid kit will help, but more important, guys, hear this, more important than a kit, you need to get trained or refreshed in basic first aid and know how to stop severe bleeding. So we'll cover building a first aid kit and a trauma kit in a future video, 
However, there's two ways that you can get started today. Check out our just released two-part podcast series on first aid over at The Survival Show Podcast. Also, you can pick up the Tiny Survival Guide in Section G. I cover injury prevention and care and give you three solid first aid checklists. All right, let's talk about heat. When the power goes out, electric heat and most oil and gas furnaces will not function properly. So you need a reliable alternate non-electric heat source. There's a couple of good solutions for emergency heat. One would be a wood stove or a wood fireplace. The next one would be a kerosene heater and you could get away with a non-electric natural gas heater provided there's still pressure in your gas line. Now, if a wood stove or gas heat is not an option, kerosene wins the day. Next up is light. For safety, security, utility, and general convenience, light is an important consideration when the grid goes down. All right, you should consider having a headlamp. Could be double A, triple A, or even better yet, in my opinion, is with a USB rechargeable light and an extra full battery brick that will get you through several, several days. A camping lantern that's solar powered is a really handy tool to have around. A tactical flashlight like this one. This is bright, it's dim, and it can actually act as a self-defense weapon. Over here we have candles, an oil or kerosene lantern, and don't forget extra batteries, extra fuel, and some matches and a lighter. All righty, that's it. There you have it. The first five of 10 categories of items you need to become a boss prepper and be ready for almost any power outage or disaster at home. Next time we'll cover communication, home and personal defense, food, hygiene, and maintenance. Now to get my free Prepper's Essential Gear Guide checklist, click the link on your screen or in the video description. And subscribe to this channel now so you don't miss out on future videos in this series and click the little bell icon to get notified when I post sweet new videos. And please, please, please check out our sponsor, Sportsman's Guide. Join famous author, Woodland Ninja, and all-around great guy, Craig Cottle, and I over at the Survival Show podcast. And make sure you grab your copy of the Tiny Survival Guide that includes 24 outdoor and survival gear checklists and a whole lot more. For your convenience, I put links to the Sportsman's Guide, my new podcast, the Tiny Survival Guide, and my free survival e-mag in the video description. All right, guys, I'm David. I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know.